Hey Alpha Fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today on Alpha Commission, of course, we're going to go over the, uh, you know, just the general pause in the market. A lot of these coins are kind of staying at support, or, you know, there's just, uh, you know, a few of them pumping uh, just a bit. Of course, this can probably come down to the fact that, uh, you know, we did have some basically neutral news on the uh, GDP, some type of a revision, which basically hasn't really changed anything. And since there wasn't anything too scary or anything too much to celebrate, the markets are pretty much just reacting at support support on the technicals on the charts right and being at support that's more likely to produce uh, little bounces across uh, all of these different stocks and as you could see by the uh, crypto bubbles uh, you know that's not really translating heavily into crypto in terms of risk on assets but across the board of the uh, s p 500 we are seeing green and i can say that even though those uh you know altcoins are a bit red on the crypto charts uh, they're not like falling or anything like that they're mostly just uh, having profit taken after the uh, last uh, pumps uh, in the last uh, week right and of course all of this this is because of that, uh, you know, gross domestic uh, product revision, uh, where we're not really paying attention to if it's a revision or not, right? It doesn't matter if it's new data or old data uh, that's being revised. The point is, what does the market expect, right? That's what this middle column is. What do they expect? What was it previously? And what is it now in its most accurate, in its most up-to-date form? And as you can see, uh, we actually had a little bit uh, less... Um, less growth or i should say um, a little bit more of a decline than previously thought it's mostly nominal right so we can consider this basically a wash basically just neutral news and as i was talking uh in the groups of course uh that uh you know thursday if uh, gdp numbers uh go up big then markets will come down uh if the gdp numbers go uh down in a big way then markets will go up i'm talking about significant moves we did not see significant moves uh today and so if gdp numbers are just neutral essentially what we got then we're just going to be waiting for the market is going to be waiting for that pce data tomorrow or uh what uh jerome powell has to say uh in the uh in the upcoming uh, couple days. Uh, on Friday, of course, uh, we do have the uh, PCE uh, data coming in. And since the GDP was basically uh, not very spectacular, it wasn't anything worth mentioning. Uh, you know, we can basically look to the PCE data to be the possible uh, catalyst for our next big move. And so if PCE data is up then markets will be down if the pce data is down then markets will be up if the pce data is neutral then whatever jerome powell the uh, chairman of the federal reserve says uh tomorrow uh or perhaps uh as he continues um in the uh in the uh, getaway with the rest uh, the rest of the uh, financial uh you know uh analyst that he'll be meeting with at uh, jackson hole then uh, of course whatever he says that's going to have more weight assuming that the gdp numbers were neutral and the pce uh, data is neutral then jerome powell's words will have the most effect on the market and of course uh, we don't have the pce data yet so we are just waiting for that and currently, the expectation for the monthly is 0.2%. The uh, year over year is going to be uh, expected at 4.7%. That's what the markets have priced in. So, of course, if these are... Uh, if these numbers are bigger than what you see printed here, then markets will go down because that's inflation. And if inflation is bad, the Federal Reserve will increase rates. And if the Federal Reserve increase rates, markets will take a hit, right? But if these numbers go 
down, then markets may actually move up. And I'm talking about significant deviations from these numbers. I'm not talking about just a little, you know, point, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't matter, okay? So if there's uh, basically a, uh, you know, a, a significant move down in these numbers from the expected, what's already priced into the market, then you can consider that markets will probably move up to adjust for it because they think it's less likely that uh, the Federal Reserve will have to increase uh, interest rates later on if, of course, inflation is being taken care of by those numbers coming down, right? Of course, if these numbers are neutral, then we just wait for uh, whatever Jerome Powell says and and of course, uh, any, you know, uh, one single misspoken word by him uh, can, uh, you know, tank the market or can send us to the moon. Uh, you know, this guy was uh, basically uh, hired by Donald Trump. Uh, you know, he was kept on board by Biden. And so, you know... Uh, the Illuminati run the show, I guess, because uh, this guy both uh, screwed up the economy and now he's also the guy in charge of fixing the economy and both Trump and Biden seem to support him. So, you know, this is what, uh, you know, politics in America, this is what the powers that be, this is what these transnationalist uh, billionaire globalist class, you know, of which, of course, uh, you know, don't be mistaken, a lot of conservatives uh, fall into that, you know, uh, perspective, uh, especially the the uh, billionaires who have operations all over the world. I mean, these guys are not really always focused on the little guy. They're not always focused on uh, what's best for us. Sometimes they're just uh, focused on what's good for their family business, you know, be it uh, Trump or Biden. And of course, Jerome Powell has been very very good for the uh, transnationalist uh, billionaire uh, globalist class, okay? So uh, we're also going to get some, uh, you know, University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index results, which, of course, are, uh, you know, used by the market in a, a pretty good way, sort of like a... Uh, a uh, you know fear and greed index and uh, but for the rest of the market so we'll be looking forward to this information uh, moving to the charts of course I do want to just update a little bit uh, regarding our uh, potential momentum levels here on Bitcoin it's been a little bit since I've updated it you know, more or less, we were trying to, uh, you know, get above that $23,000 area and then, you know, hopefully above 24500 to see if we could continue this kind of bull run that we've been having ever since uh, the middle of June. We've just had an astounding bull run and we've still got a uh, higher uh, low on the chart, you know, which is basically double bottoming here. It is showing considerable weakness after having uh, broken down on that uh, rising wedge, right? And so we did hit the measured move of this rising wedge, which did break down as we saw volume uh, decrease. You see these blue candles just getting smaller and smaller. And so, you know, of course, if the buyers aren't stepping in with enough volume, then how can this go higher, right? So what happened is we broke down this basically uh, perfect technical uh, rising rising wedge. And so, of course, here at Alpha Commission, we gave the warning to get out of the market there or protect your long positions with stop losses or whatnot. Or that could have been a great shorting position. And we did just see an incredible 15% uh, drop on the charts. And we also used volatility analysis in order to suggest that that move would be possible. So we did have confluence with divergence with patterns, and then, of course, also with volume and volatility. And so we did have the measured move here, which we did catch support on. Uh, that measured move uh, basically was perfectly hit, uh, you know, more or less. Uh, we could perhaps have uh, uh, suggested 20,000, but, you know, the fact that we had support in this area, that's good enough. Uh, the problem is we are now putting in a bit of a bear flag here 
here. And while we could have a, a mean reversion to the upside, that's going to be dependent on maintaining these local momentum levels, which is that we can't fall below 21,000. We can't, uh, we need to get above 22,000 as soon as possible. And I'm going to be much more comfortable with 22,000. $200 in order to consider both the 24-hour exchanges and the CME uh, exchanges, the uh, professional exchanges, which are closed on the weekend, they're closed at nights, and uh, they have limited hours, uh, as opposed to the 24-7 exchanges, which most of us use, like uh, Coinbase and uh, Binance. The professional exchanges just have slightly different chart formations, and for them, I would really want to see over 22200 and I Either way, we lose 21,000, you know, we're probably uh, going to fall a lot more. And so these are my updated momentum zones. We're going to lose it at 21,000, and we're going to bullishly keep it above 22,000 uh, on the daily. This will change in approximately three and a half hours, but I expect basically the same, uh, you know, numbers to be uh, put in. Um, if we uh, are looking at where our support is, of course, we're at support, so we really don't need to be uh, too worried um, about uh, falling too hard immediately, right? If we do just have a little bit of a dip before the end of the day or, uh, you know, this night, uh, you know, we do have a couple zones that can catch us, you know, approximately in this kind of 20,000 uh, to 19,000 ish area. And while that could be pretty scary, uh, it's not uh, too terrible considering uh, just how fall, uh, just how far we could fall. And to get a sense of how far, uh, you know, crypto could fall, then of course, uh, we will be wanting to consider other factors. Now, we can consider such things as, uh, you know, our momentum. You can see that we do have on the MACD just uh, this type of uh, really bearish decrease in our momentum over time. It just keeps going down. You can just see our momentum has just been incredibly decreasing ever since, uh, you know, uh, October in 2021. But what's more important is since uh, June uh, 15th, of course, uh, you know, we uh, really haven't seen anything uh, too spectacular. Uh, so, you know, we're just going to uh, want to uh, watch what's going on there. But of course, uh, you know, momentum isn't the only thing that we can consider. We can also consider, um, you know, the uh, patterns that are on the chart. And for the patterns that we want to look at, I think primarily, and I don't want to scare you guys, but I think primarily we should be looking at these uh, bear flag formations. Of course, um, I do have them drawn out for us here. And what you can see is we had this, uh, basically this major bear flag right here. You can see the flag, right? It looks kind of like a golf club actually, but uh, you know, we call these bear flags. And so you had an approximate uh, measured move on this bear flag and then, you know, the pole of the flag and that uh, the pole Hole basically led to our drop down price on the macro. We did hit that at approximately seventeen and a half thousand dollars, approximately eighteen thousand dollars, and so this move uh, basically uh, played out, right? And uh, what did we see after that? Of course, uh, we did see uh, just a little bear flag uh, being put in here, right? You can see this um, flag right here. And again, just a little kind of uh, bear, uh, just a little kind of a golf club shape, right? A little kind of lowercase uh, b, right? And then, of course, this one played out as well. And uh, you can see uh, just this uh, perfect, um, you know, conforming to uh, that uh, measured move, you know, more or less um, in the uh, area of uh, seventeen and a half thousand dollars as well. So both these bear flags ended out uh, ended up playing out perfectly. And so what's the scary thing? Well, the scary thing is that we have yet another 
uh, bear flag essentially being uh, born out here. And, you know, whether we consider that we could pull the flag from up here or from here, you know, let's just take the uh, smaller one at first, right? So that's going to be this uh, yellow move. Basically, it's the same uh, distance as this uh, pink move, but we have to apply it at the bottom of our uh, current flag formation. And that would take us basically to $10,500-ish, right, ish, because uh, all of this is approximate. Uh, you're kind of eyeballing it. In the previous episode, I did give you very specific horizontal levels. This episode, I'm going over uh, bear flags. So you can check out my last two videos if you want to get more information about what I think about lower targets. But just for what's on the chart today, we can consider uh, this kind of move. And if we did want to just uh, you know pull out uh, some type of, uh, you know, even scarier kind of uh, chart here. And let's make this, uh, I don't know, let's make this one purple, I guess. Then we could consider some type of move like this. And uh, guys, uh, that's the most scary one, uh, assuming that this is kind of a flag here. Um, I'm not sure that this is really being put in, but that could bring us all the way down to uh, $500 to $1,000. Uh, I'm not claiming that, guys. I'm just saying, uh, look how Bitcoin has been moving. So the point with this one is not to say that I think that we're going to get down there. That's not uh, my current belief based upon the current dynamics in the market. I am just saying that these bear flags have been been pretty accurate and of course eventually one of these bear flags has to fail and I don't know if you can see this but we also have this little mini kind of uh, baby bear flag right here right and so if we do uh, just look at this uh, baby bear flag then uh, you know we can see that the measured move for that one would be approximately uh, somewhere uh, in the neighborhood of, uh, let's see, uh, 18,000. Uh, again, uh, you know, it's just basically at our range lows, right? So if we were to consider that we have a bit of a range here, then, you know, boom, basically we're taken all the way uh, down to our range lows by this kind of baby bear flag. And if we break out of those range lows, maybe you could expect 10,000 and then something in the market would have to change dynamically. Otherwise, we have risk of these lower levels. And of course, I'm not expecting uh, Bitcoin to go to zero or even $500 or $1,000. What I would expect is that as we're getting into this area, assuming that we do break down, uh, make sure that you understand this very clearly. We do not have to break down in this area. We might just continue going up. I am not trying to be some type of perma bear or something like that. I'm just trying to show you what's possible on the charts. Uh, this would be the, uh, the uh, ultimate worst case situation in my mind. This is very realistic. I believe that the 10,000, 11,000 is a pretty good area to be thinking about. And then I think what's going to happen is eventually, uh, you know, if we do have this type of move, then the market, you know, it could play shenanigans or whatnot, but eventually we would just go sideways for a long time and maybe have huge ups and downs. But, uh, you know, if we did break down like this, probably stock market is breaking all the way down as well. And eventually they all will catch support at some point. And, you know, it could get very scary, but then eventually it's just going to go sideways for half a year, go sideways for a year. Who knows? And, um, you know, with very good pumps and a lot of scary drops. But at the same time, it's just going to overall go sideways until the market cleans up, until the market is able to 
to inject more liquidity enough to kickstart a next bull market and then we're going to start seeing our emas you know cross to the upside again this is not what i'm projecting um, i'm just looking at our current chart which is basically right here and this is the bearish scenario right i'm just showing you the bearish scenarios i'm not trying to uh suggest that this is what's actually going to happen just preparing you mentally for what's possible uh based upon these formations of course uh that's why i've also got these momentum zones uh you know uh, charted out because if we do get above 22000 then probably we're going to the uh, upside right probably we're going up so again like uh, capturing 22000 by the end of the day and uh, you know that's definitely going to be important for us for how we're positioned coming into the uh, Jerome Powell uh, meetings tomorrow coming into the PCE data tomorrow and uh, you know if we uh, lose 21000 we're going to be in a very weak position if we uh, gain 22000 we'll be in a bit of a stronger position and just where we are right now we're just kind of chilling out we could both have a mean reversion or we could have a bear flag okay that's what i'm saying we're just kind of in the middle and again like if you look at our range this is our range where are we we're in the we're in the middle guys now what do we say about taking trades when you're in the middle of a range? You don't have to take that trade. Sometimes it's just kind of fool or, you know, just kind of a, a fool's game to be taking trades in the middle of a range. You're neither at support nor are you at resistance. So it's not a good, uh, it's not a good long and it's not a good short. This is our local area range. Love it or hate it, we're just in the middle. And while we can say we're at support, we're equally under this type of, uh, you know, mid, uh, mid level resistance. So these momentum zones are really really accurate guys you can see we get rejected in this area all the time and that's where we are but we also have bounced in this area uh several times right and so that's also where we are we don't know if we're going up or down and if you're just taking a position in the middle of the range right here you're pretty much gambling because you have no idea what that pce data tomorrow is going to say you have no idea what jerome powell is going to express to the market and until we have that data again you guys are just like a gamble uh, with your positions now I would say there is uh, more in favor of going to the upside temporarily especially over the last couple days we've shown that to be true but we also have these type of institutional candles that would like to be captured and uh, so you know these type of uh, small moves here uh, maybe fake outs to the upside before a downside even you know we could put in lower highs you know just pumping up before going down is quite you know possible and then the vice versa is also true sometimes the market makers and the uh, institutions and the uh, exchanges they just want to grab some liquidity to the low side before they pump to the upside and so likewise it could be completely the opposite of what you expect and we could just see some type of a dump before a pump and so uh, that's why normally we talk about uh, carving out a range determining if you're at support or if you're at resistance you long on support and you short on uh, resistance um, when you're uh, normally trading and while of course there can be uh, some type of exuberance in the market you can kind of get these wicks out of your channel um, you know when we even contract the channel uh, to take that into account um, so of course you know you can long in the bottom third and uh, short in the top third if you want but uh you know so we we could take these trades uh, up and we could take these uh, trades down but again guys we're just we're just in the middle we're just in the middle so uh when i've been saying for the last couple episodes that it's not necessary for me to be taking a position right now uh, i don't 
feel the need to take a position. I'd like to see us to get above $24,500 solidly. Then I'm going to be very bullish. I would like to see us breaking down. Uh, you know, then I'm going to be bearish. And uh, from here, I don't know. We already took the short up here, guys, right? Because we had we had our uh, our lovely rising wedge, and so we literally shorted from the top of this range. We took our profits at the top of this range. So the alpha fam is sitting pretty. Like we did our job. We entered in here. And we took our profits up here, right? And if you wanted to be shorting, then you could have short uh, from there, um, you know. And of course, we do have these bear flags that overall suggest the possibility of more downside possibly to come. Uh, guys, uh, again, I don't want to, you to just be thinking that I'm just uh, talking out of uh, my imagination, but, uh, you know, we can uh, look at some other things to try to verify this. You look at the uh, RSI, right? I mean, I'm just on the daily here, and let's go look at the RSI ever since uh, the top of the market over here, around $69,000. Let's just stretch just for that period of time and let's see what's been happening on the rsi over that amount of time right uh so let's go ahead and just uh, put on these things that i've marked out well looky here uh at the bottom of the market uh or pardon me at the uh, kind of mid-range of the market in um uh, in uh September in 2021, we started to make this type of formation, right, um, where we basically bounced up. We found more support at the top of the market. Where we broke down from this uh, diagonal, uh, first, it wasn't too bad. Just kind of like a little bit of a drop and some choppiness to the side. But what happened is once we got past there, once we came back to the EMA, right, once we came back to the EMA here, that white line, um, what happened is we fell off a dramatic cliff. And what was that drop? That drop was approximately 25%, 25 to 30% drop, right? And then we ended up just chopping sideways, and we still continued to drop even more for a total drop of approximately 40 percent then we broke above the ema cleanly we started to put in that uptrend again uh, again we broke down and not much happened just a little bit of a drop and sideways you might even think oh guys this is the bottom of the market right we can go up from here but what happened is that on the second the second kind of uh, breakdown in this uh, downtrend under the RSI, then we had same thing that we had right here, just a huge drop of approximately 36%, guys, 36%. And look, as it continued to go sideways, we had a total drop of approximately 50%. 5%. So that was a huge drop. And we can consider, of course, that uh, maybe we had a, another bit of an uptrend right here, right? And so, you know, maybe we could start over and just say that, uh, you know, this is its own drop on its own. So let's just take this one as basically 40%, right? Uh, what was it, 36%, right, just on its own? Yeah, 36% drop. And then let's look at this one, right, where it, uh, you know, where it uh, basically broke down on here. And then we can see that there was a 30, uh, pardon me, a 40% percent drop and so here we had a 40 percent drop here we had a 40 percent drop here we had a 40 percent drop and while we didn't have the 40 percent drop on the breakdown right we didn't have it over here either right we had to, we didn't and we didn't have it over here either it came delayed it came delayed after a period of going sideways. And when did it come on this one when we retouched the uh, white EMA here? When did it come on this one when we just kind of were chopping sideways and uh, touching that white EMA? And what are we about to do on our current drop? We're about to touch the white EMA and perhaps even chop sideways on it. And that, again, is when two cases 
right? Two cases just broke down uh, intensely uh, to the tune of approximately 40%. And we are coming up on the possibility of entering one of those very uh, deadly, very dangerous points um, on the chart, okay? And while this one right here may have just been kind of a fake out, or it may have just been just a little kind of, uh, you know, intermediary, uh, basically, um, uh, position, sort of like, let's say, uh, this one over here, right? You can see this, this little kind of baby bear move right here. And then it also has its own um, let's mark these ones in a different color because it's just a little kind of micro formation amongst the uh, macro formation. Then you can see that this one also had just type of a, a little, uh, you know, downturn of its own. And so while we consider this is the chop to the right and drop 30%, this one was basically just a, a breakdown and that one went down 30%. Either way, guys, okay? Either way, whether it's uh, this intermediary one or it's these uh, big ones, right, uh, with the yellow uh, breakdowns that are kind of like a delayed reaction or whether it's this kind of like a dashed line pink one with the immediate reaction. Uh, they've always had big moves to the downside, and we had one of those breaks. It appears that we're putting in a delayed reaction version, okay? And so let's just take the average of those moves, and let's just say that there is a delayed reaction. Yeah, maybe we pump a little bit, whatever. We're just chopping, you know, to the right, and let's just say that these, uh, you know, e, uh, these RSI plays actually do end up working out. Then we could see anything from uh, the average or from the uh, minimum, which was a uh, 25%, right? 25% to the uh, maximum, which was 40%, uh, right? And so that would bring us into this range, uh, somewhere between uh, 16,000 to, to 13,000, uh, right? So that's a possible um, outcome based upon what's happening on the uh, RSI. And again, like I'm not trying to scare you guys, I'm just trying to be realistic about what's happening on our RSI right now, guys, because, uh, you know, if you didn't believe the bear flags, right, you may want to have something else to kind of go by. And uh, let's just see if I can just turn these things off. Doot, doot, doot. Yep, turn those off. Go back to our main chart here. And let's take a look at our bear flags now that we've mapped out an area of a possible projection based upon the RSI. If we look at the bear flags, well, look at this, this yellow bear flag. Uh, takes us into that kind of region, right? And so uh, could this be an even bigger move? Um, perhaps, uh, are we slowing down our descent, right? Are we going to start uh, rounding these moves? So maybe they're not as dramatic anymore. Now that we're kind of at the bottom, one third at the top, maybe things were super dramatic at the top of the chart and just kind of, uh, you know, just kind of super scary in the middle of the chart. But maybe as we get to the bottom of the chart, maybe they start rounding out, not being so, uh, you know, crazy, right? So, you know, this one kind of took us on the roller coaster. This one kind of took us straight down. And then maybe are we going to start rounding out? Yeah, that could prob that could happen. I mean, the ratios could start getting limited by, you know, the perceived value at the bottom of the market. Because, of course, everyone's just going to drop straight down, you know, from the top because nobody wants to hold this stuff at the top. Why would you want to hold something at the top? You know, only, you know, uh, crazy shills, you know, the leaders of these kind of idiot leaders of uh, coin armies, right? Quote unquote, uh, coin armies. I mean, there's the only guys who like are trying to encourage people to hold coins from the top. I mean, really stupid, nutty, like, uh, you know, it should be illegal. Those guys should be in jail for doing that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, other than that, you know, everyone else is probably 
selling, right? Because they don't want to be stuck with the holding the bags. You know, they want to cash out when everything has high value. And then at the bottom of the market, people are going to start getting, you know, of course, there's going to be this really intense fear area. That's the, you know, uh, the point where the market kind of capitulates, right? And then after everyone kind of capitulates, then you're not really left with uh, that many people holding things anymore. You're kind of left with the brave people, right? The people who've seen all of this. And are they really going to sell, you know, once they get to these levels? I don't know. They've been holding on this whole period. You know, at some point, it just makes sense to just keep holding it because they probably have faith in the asset or something. Or anyway, they didn't need to sell it. Something like this. So these guys, you know, they might get worn down by a recession over time, which is why, uh, you know, bear markets you know, tend to take a while at the bottom, right? They might take a year or so at the bottom before they start testing their highs again, right? Of course, there could be a spike up or down or whatever, you know, in between there. But, you know, it tends to take a little while at the bottom because they want to see if these last holders, you know, if they have bills to pay, right? If they have bills to pay because they may be brave, you know, here in a summer 2022, but, you know, if there's a recession and they have bills to pay, then maybe even, you know, these market makers and, uh, you know, the people who really control these markets, guys, right? The real, you know, investors, the real like billionaires and institutions that can just move this market to the upside. They just want to kind of ring these guys out a little bit. They want to just squeeze them just a little bit more, get every penny out of their pocket and kind of stress test them, stress test the system until they know that it's bottomed out. Then they're going to take the market upward because anyone left remaining at that point, I mean, they're obviously not going to sell, right? So, you know, you, you can only squeeze humanity so so much before it's, you know, uh, when it's no longer worth your time. And once the calculation is that they can't squeeze enough money out of these guys at the bottom, then they're take, they're going to take the markets back up. That's just how markets work. They try to squeeze every last penny. You know, they try to stress test every last uh, price until, uh, you know, every holder, you know, is faced with basically an existential uh, decision on their position, uh, assuming that they've been holding and not trading, right? So guys, uh, that's basically what I see to the downside. Of course, if we do just get excellent news on uh, the PCE, right, the PCE numbers, which is that uh, if inflation is down in a big way, then maybe the markets could spike. And just to uh, recap, of course, uh, we do have uh, the uh, the numbers here, which is a 0.2% for the monthly and 4.7% uh, for the year over year. If those numbers are significantly down, in other words, if inflation comes down, then the markets are likely to uh, go up. Now, uh, one wild card, of course, is Jerome Powell, and Jerome Powell can still spook the markets. So, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, that was your alpha for the day. Uh, pay attention to what's going on tomorrow. Consider to have a uh, you know a perspective, a bullish perspective, and a bearish perspective, so that you're ready either for an up move or for a down move. Uh, understand uh, the realities of the market. You know, we haven't really put in a bottom of a bear market yet. We haven't stress tested the environment yet. We have a recession coming up. Yes, we could have bottomed. Maybe we did bottom. But even once you bottom, you do have a lot of sideways action typically for a lot of time until liquidity comes back to the market. And since right now the Federal Reserves across the world are tightening, liquidity is tightening. Of course, there could be some politics that has loose liquidity, you know, during political seasons. You know, that's normal. Every government, every political party, it always happens. Every friggin' political season. They always try to just, uh, you know, just kind of uh, polish the turd, right? Uh, just try to, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, hoodwink us just a little bit and, uh, you know, uh, bamboozle the numbers a bit. But uh, that aside, you know, of course, uh, we are in an overall uh, shrinking uh, liquidity situation compared to when we just had infinite free money with the infinite money machine uh, back in the uh, the Trump days, right, where just uh, everyone was just printing, you know, $9 trillion, you know, hand over fist, giving every billionaire, uh, you know, PPP loans, giving every business PPP loans, nothing uh, accountable, nobody had to pay back anything, all of these loans that all these businesses took for trillions of dollars all of it was debt forgiven right and now we're so hard up for cash people are saying oh you can't help the students if you took a loan you have to reback pay back the loan that's an obligation uh wh where were you guys back here <laughs> right where were you guys back here when uh you know billionaires and hundred millionaires the trump family the pelosi's you know all these republicans in congress who are whining about the student loans so the students they might have to they might be able to eat mcdonald's instead of ramen right you you know, all you know, where where were you guys uh, when you were taking the loans, the PPE, lo uh, the PPP loans for your businesses, right, Mr. Republican Senator? Where were you when you when your loan was forgiven? by the Trump administration. What were you saying back then? Uh, it's all a lot of hypocrites. It's all a lot of just uh, hoodwinking. It's just, you know, I'll scratch my back. Uh, you, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. And that's politics. It's politics season. Again, guys, liquidity is having some type of tricks on us. We got a, uh, you know, a mini bull run on the stock market probably thanks to that kind of political season. That nice uh, summer rally, could it last uh, a little bit longer, you know, maybe to the elections? Maybe, maybe we just go sideways. But overall, these problems haven't been fixed yet. So you do have to be aware of these possible bearish outcomes and be open-minded to the downside, just like you also have to be open-minded to the upside. And most likely, we're only going to have confirmation of a bottom if we have already bottomed, um, you know, sometime after the politics season, perhaps, uh, you know, in a December, end of December uh, 2022, or perhaps in January 2023, you know, just when the markets can kind of clear up from all the uh, silly politics season. And then, uh, you know, we just have to deal with the straight facts of a new year before us. Uh, guys, again, that was your alpha for the day. Uh, you know, stay safe and happy trading.